Hey everybody, a blizzard warning update. This is a fast cast. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Let's get rolling. Here you go. We've got the uh, snow showers continuing as we go into the midday hour across parts of South Dakota. It's moving to the south as north winds are increasing out to the west to 40 miles per hour. So right now we're looking at wind gusts as we head into the midday hour that are hitting the, the 40 to 50 mile per range out to the west, but are sustained winds and gusts over 25 miles per hour gusting to 50. Here in the valley, we're starting to see some gusts over over 40 miles per hour in the Northern Valley in particular, and that's where the conditions are the, the, the worst. Right now you have a lull in the winds, but they are going to be picking up as we go through the midday hour across Minnesota as well, uh, heading into your afternoon. North Dakota roads, no travel advisory, now has been extended all the way down through Grand Forks, uh, the uh, Nelson County area up to the international border. This includes the uh, uh, Grafton Park River area as well. And then a travel alert in purple out there. A quick look at a couple of the road conditions pages here. It'll show you. And these are changing hour to hour throughout the day. Here's Highway 5 and Cavalier. You just can't see as the gusts are picking up to 40 miles per hour. Here's Highway 2. And at times, we're getting some zero visibility there as well as you look off into the distance. It's not all the time, but as you're driving, you're going to run into that Here's a look at the uh, Amarado area as you go through, and you can see off in the distance the snow fog from the blowing snow that's taking place out there. No travel advised in Northeast North Dakota and travel alerts elsewhere. A quick look at Minnesota showing no travel advisories in the purple roads you see here. Same problem areas we had yesterday. Those areas have snow on the ground from yesterday. We had added snow this morning, and now the winds are picking up to 40 miles per hour. Here's Highway 11 at Donaldson. As you get out into the Badger area, not quite as windy, uh, and not quite as much blowing snow, but the wind is going to be picking up in your area as we head into the midday hour and beyond. We do have some travel troubles as we go out towards Lake Park. Here is a look at Highway 10 at Lake Park. Uh, and it does look like the visibility is a little bit better at times, but you're going to run into those open places where the snow just uh, reduces visibility and blowing snow reduces visibility terribly. On Interstate 94 towards Alexandria, we have a report of a crash on I-94 out there. We can see the visibility is a little bit better, but we do have snowfall taking place there. And the band of snow is heaviest as we get into St. Cloud and Point South, where we have snow on the ground and wind that is on the way. So that's the area I'm concerned about for the afternoon and evening hours going through our day. Here is a look at the uh, temperatures that we have across the area right now. We have sub-zero readings uh, uh, across the region, and we are also looking at some temperature changes that are pretty impressive across the region. Check this out. Temperature changes here, 30 to 40 degrees warmer than yesterday at this time. And uh, the cold air is on its way now with the north winds returning. We are colder than yesterday across parts of Wisconsin. Air temperatures there while I switch this out are hitting the uh, sub-zero range and stuck in the sub-zero range where you see the purple here. So Duluth, uh, the Arrowhead of Minnesota, and Winnipeg uh, off to Brandon, Manitoba, the coldest of the air. We've warmed to 19 degrees in Bismarck, and it is on its way uh, back down again as this, this blob of, I don't know what color you call that, working its way down. Sea foam green is working its way down, and that's not good. 20 below as you look up towards... Uh, areas north of Thunder Bay in Ontario there. So it's cold, it's windy, and the travel is going to be pretty tricky. Let's get you to one of the models here that show us the forecast for the day. We're going to look at the, the Canadian model. It's doing a little bit better job with what's going on with the snow shower activity. Here we go. Minnesota, central Minnesota moving off toward Duluth is this batch of snow. This is as we go through the midday hour and into the early afternoon. It slides into western parts of Wisconsin. A band also out in parts of western North Dakota and central South Dakota continues. Look at the isobars here. You're going to see that the wind speeds do end from west to east as we go through the evening hours tonight. So I'll put the times on this and we'll look at actual wind gusts. So we've got the snow that will be exiting as we go through the afternoon hours. The wind 40 to 50 miles per hour as we head into the midday hour and mid morning hours now will pick up to 50 to 60 miles per hour heading through the midday hour in the Black Hills Montana in the eastern reaches near Glendive and Mile City, as well as you folks from Beach through Dickinson and on your way into western parts of Morton County. Now the wind really starts picking up now in the northern valley at midday, but that band of heavy winds bursts down the I-29 corridor and increases to 40 to 45 miles per hour as we go through about noon. So our wind is going to get stronger in the FM area and point south toward the Sisseton Hills, where they extended the blizzard warning into your area this morning. Now those strong winds will push their way right into southwest Minnesota and Iowa as we go into the uh, mid-afternoon and evening hours. So from about 
2 to 5 o'clock, the gusty winds punch into that area and the Twin Cities. Here's where I'm worried about fresh snow and yesterday's snow from Bemidji and Lake of the Woods, Kuchiching County, straight down through central parts of Minnesota. You're going to have gusts upwards of 25 to 35 miles per hour, and you got quite a bit of fresh snow. Our 40 mile per hour winds last through the midday hour, and then they start shutting off. Watch what's going on in Montana. Strongest winds will then surrender here in the valley and parts of the valley down to gusts of around 30 to 35, still pretty strong, still blizzard worthy as we head through the dinner hour to 8 p.m. And then after that, it starts dying down a pinch. So that's a look at the forecast. Models can sometimes overblow the wind speeds with these too, but based on the fluffiness of the snow, it's gonna be terrible travel out there. Do travel safe, have Hutch's weather app in ha on hand. And here was a look at my forecast that I put together for snowfall. And this is just about wrapping up a half inch seems to be about right for Fargo Moorhead how about Grand Forks let me know if you've got a little bit more than that before the wind really starts ripping for you guys it's picking up now one to two inches Botno down to the James River Valley area most areas seeing one isolated places picking up the two plus and up here near Lake of the Woods uh, we're looking at the Rainy Lake area one to three inches of snow maybe a little bit more down into the Bemidji area and the I-94 corridor and points north Brainerd Lakes area as you look into Park Rapids, as you look into Monoman and Grand, uh, excuse me, as we get into Ottertail County here, I'm expecting lower snowfall amounts in this little light blue chunk here as we go through. Again, the snow has fallen, the wind is on its way. If you must travel, have a survival kit, call ahead, let people know when you're arriving, full tank of gas, a fully charged phone that you stay off of so you make sure that if you are stranded, that battery stays as full as possible. And then call for help. And as soon as they can get to you, they will. That's a look at your conditions across the region. I'm meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Again, road conditions are changing hour to hour. Check them if you must travel before you go to know what you're getting into. I'll be back throughout the day.